Bosses should be the ultimate test and culmination of everything you've learned throughout your time playing any given video game. At their best, they're exciting and test every ounce of skill you have. And at their worst, they're either boring or use unfair mechanics. For this list, I want to specifically talk about difficulty, which doesn't mean unfair. You might actually really enjoy fighting some of these bosses, whereas others you can just be proud you beat. So here is my totally not subjective list of the 11 hardest bosses in video games. Now as a warning, there will be spoilers because some of these are final bosses. For this kind of list, you just can't get around it, but you can check the description so you can skip around and make sure you don't spoil a game you don't want spoiled for yourself. So, let's get good. Every kid growing up in the late 80s and early 90s knew what that sound meant. It was time to strap on your gloves and get ready to fight the Dynamite Kid. Punch-Out, or as it was originally called, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, was NES gaming at its finest. The gameplay was simple, but both addictive and fun. All you had to do was memorize your opponent's patterns and use those patterns to quickly identify what they would do and strike back. Of course, like any good game, the challenge ramps up the further you progress. And the final challenge was, of course, Mike Tyson himself. Iron Mike had exceedingly quick strikes, with only the faintest amount of a tell. It tested your reflexes to their height, and while simple, it was still so challenging that beating him became a massive bragging point. If there's one modern day company known for fair and difficult, yet rewarding challenges, it's From Software. And From Software's latest major game, Sekiro, not Sekiro. Quick Japanese lesson, when you see an R in Japanese, it actually doesn't sound like an English R. They actually don't have that sound in Japanese. It sounds like a mix between an R and an L sound, which is also why native Japanese speakers can have trouble speaking English when it comes to R's and L's. They just don't have those sounds in that language. Is another incredible and compelling action game by, honestly, one of my favorite developers of all time. I'm still waiting for another one of these bad boys. Can we just pause the video for a moment to talk about how great King's Field is and how badly it needs a revival? If no one else does it, I'm doing it. So it's no surprise that the final boss of Sekiro would be one of the most challenging video game bosses, period. And that boss is Ishin Ashina. Now I think there's a debate over if Truel is more difficult or Ishin the Sword Saints, but as this is completely subjective, personally, True Al didn't really give me that much trouble, but Ishin the Sword Saint, on the other hand, that is a whole other story. The thing about Ishin Ashina is it's essentially a boss fight with not one, not two, not even three, but four phases, with the first part of the boss fight being against Genichiro Ashina, which I'm counting because if you lose against any phase of this fight, you have to start right back at Genichiro. Six hours. It took me six hours to beat Ishin the first time. On subsequent playthroughs, I could knock him out in two to three attempts. But I'll never forget just how insanely challenging Ishin Ashina was before I truly mastered the game. And as much as I'm not a fan of excessively multiple phase boss fights, which I consider this one, it really is well designed in that, when I had truly mastered Sekiro, he surprisingly was a fun and fair boss fight. But again, he truly is a test of everything you've learned in the game. And unless you've at least approached mastering it, he is going to give you one hell of a time. Ishinashina, I understand how you succeeded in your war. We haven't finished the From Software part of this video. Partly because I'm such a huge fan of the company, I'm intimately familiar with just about every modern game of theirs, and partly because Bloodborne is in many ways more challenging than the Souls games thanks to its ramped up speed. That and the amazing world building are just a couple of the elements that helped Bloodborne stand out from the Souls games. And if you know From Software, you know that their DLC happens to contain the largest challenges of their games. In Dark Souls 1, that was Manus. In Dark Souls 2, that was arguably Fume Knight. Actually, I take that back. Smelter Demon is still the worst.
and in Dark Souls 3, that honor probably goes to either Freyda or a Slave Knight Gale. Then again, Dark Eater Madir honestly gave me more trouble than he should have. But you know what was more challenging than all of those bosses? Uh, again, for me, because this is just my experience. Bloodborne's Orphan of Kaz. While he didn't take me six hours, like Ishin Ashina, Orphan is so hard to read. He's quick, his attacks and attack patterns vary broadly with different ways to tackle them, and of course, as became customary with the latter Souls games, halfway through the fight, Orphan of Kaz becomes far more challenging. Just when you think you have the upper hand, he's sure to smash your face in with a placenta. What a way to go. To many of you, I'm sure when you think of Ninja Gaiden, you think of the excellent Ninja Gaiden of 2004. It's a crushingly difficult game, which is why it was perfect when Team Ninja merged this action combo style with the Soul style to create Neo and Neo 2. So I wouldn't fault you for thinking a boss from this game deserves to be on the list. But I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the original Ninja Gaiden. Like the Xbox Ninja Gaiden, the original NES game is a brutally difficult challenge that's only made easier thanks to Infinite Continues. But if you do lose all of your continues, you'll have to start at the beginning of a stage. Now here is where the fun part comes in. Lose to most bosses, and so long as you have lives left, you'll get to attempt fighting them again until you get a game over and need to use a continue. Lose to the game's final boss, Jacquio, and no matter how many lives you have, you're transported back to the start of his level, which is brutally difficult in its own right. In fact, it's so hard and frustrating, it actually inspired me to make an entire video series joking about it, because it is just that insane and frustrating of an experience. And if that's not hard enough alone, that's not really the boss fight itself. So, thanks to my Wii U and save states, I was finally able to do as many attempts as I wanted against Jakio without fear of the horrible repercussions, only to discover... This boss is incredibly difficult, even being able to fight him as many times as you want. Unless you collect a very specific power-up on the way into the boss fight, good luck, because hitting him without it is ridiculously hard. On top of that, he'll constantly shoot homing fireballs at you that continuously chase you. But hey, if you beat him, you'll get the satisfaction of finding out there's yet another boss fight right afterwards. Don't lose, or it's back to the beginning of the stage again. So fun. So fun. This time I am being sarcastic. Bullet Hell is definitely one of the most challenging genres of games. The whole point is being able to quickly react and dodge into the most minuscule of spaces. It tests your hand-eye coordination to the max. And while I'm going to get to one or two dedicated Bullet Hell games, I thought it would be fun to start with something different and a little more well-known. That being Undertale. Undertale, of course, isn't the hardest game, and has multiple ways to finish it without needing to have a huge skill cap. But, choose to be an asshole and murder absolutely everybody. Yeah, you're in for a bad time. <coughs> Sans will block your path to victory, trying to protect the Undertale world. And this regular Joker puts up one hell of a fight. He's essentially able to break the rules of the game, as he also breaks the fourth wall, meaning he can even attack you while you're in the item menu, attempting to find something to help you heal. His attacks are an onslaught of bullet hell, and while the game does prep you for this, as its combat is bullet hell in style, this is a glimpse into the madness of some of the most insane shmup games. Hollow Knight is, in my humble opinion, one of the best games to come out in the past decade. This little indie darling is a perfect encapsulation of action-oriented metroidvania. And as the game has a heavy focus on action, that means that the bosses ramp up in difficulty to an extreme degree. I fondly remember being the nightmare version of Troop Master Grimm, the Nightmare King, and thinking, I did it. The hardest challenge Hollow Knight has to offer, complete. Hmm. Oh, how innocent and naive I was. Turns out Hollow Knight took a cue from the Souls games and made every DLC progressively more challenging. One could even say, Hollow Knight is the Dark Souls of Metroidvania. I'm kidding. Now that I work here, I hope you understand I'm just spoofing on that meme. While the Grim Troop was a Hollow Knight DLC, the final one, Godmaster, is just absolutely bonkers difficult. So here's the thing. This DLC includes some of the most difficult boss fights in the game, 
but wrapped up as part of a boss rush pantheon. Meaning, you'll have to complete insanely challenging boss rushes to even be able to attempt many of these new bosses. You'll have to become the absolute king and master of Hollow Knight in order to finish the Godmaster DLC. And I'm going to be honest with you all, the Godmaster DLC took me out, and as much as I absolutely adore the game, I haven't finished this particular DLC, so the rest of it's going to be word of mouth. But, if the lesser bosses of the Godmaster DLC gave me as much trouble as they did, then I can only imagine that the final boss of the DLC is the peak of insane difficulty. I'm talking about Absolute Radiance. Lore-wise, Absolute Radiance is the infection that has caused the Hallowness citizens to turn into zombie-like beings. And now, you're fighting her. And she is brutal. She's basically a beefed up version of the original final boss, Radiance, but like any alternate version of a boss in Hollow Knight, far, far more difficult. And don't you worry, every phase of her boss fight, she gets progressively more challenging, so you'll never really get that sigh of relief you desperately want until you become the utmost master of the game. This fight requires memorization, reflexes, and patience, as one false step could spell the end. Enter the Gungeon is kind of an interesting one because, mm, well, the difficulty really depends on your RNG and what items you happen to get as this is a roguelike. And even getting to these various bosses can be based on a mix of skill, what items and guns you're fortunate enough to get, and of course the bosses themselves are randomized. Additionally, I think depending on what you happen to be good at, some will be easier than others. While it's been a while since I delved into the Gungeon, for me, the Dragon is pretty basic when you get its pattern down, and I honestly didn't struggle too much against the Lich. But that damn rat! Let's throw everything aside about how difficult it is to even find the resourceful rat in the first place, as that doesn't really count. Even though it's convoluted and hard and actually pretty cool. The Resourceful Rat has three phases. The first phase involves him shooting a variety of quick attacks at you with typically small spots to dodge, as is typical for a bullet hell game. If you survive that, he'll hop in a mech with another set of brutal attacks. All of this is hard enough, and it's compounded by the fact that since choosing to fight him is early in the game, you're less likely to be OP against him. But then, it's punch out. In this final phase, you'll have a 2 minute time limit to knock out the rat 3 times. The further you get, the more items you get for winning. And if you fail, technically you've still won, but not 100%. And to be honest with you all, I don't think I've ever 100%ed the rat. I had to look up a video just to see what happens when you manage to do it. So well done Index 154. And don't worry, I've played Hades, I just happen to think Enter the Gungeon is more challenging. Especially since the shield is super OP, in my opinion. Most of the time, when you think about difficult bosses, you probably think about skill-based challenges. You know, things that require fast reflexes, combo memorization, or pattern recognition. It's not too often you think about JRPGs, but I thought it would be fun to throw one in here. So let's talk about Final Fantasy VII. Still, one of the greatest JRPGs of all time, and even the recent remake was incredible. It's so good. One of the things I absolutely adored about Final Fantasy VII was just how much you could do that wasn't strictly story related. Raising and racing various chocobos so you could get the gold chocobo was so much fun. Everything about Gold Saucer, especially the snowboard minigame, I love. And then the hidden summons like Knights of the Round, which literally takes over one minute to watch and isn't skippable, by the way, incredible. But what that also means was that there were some insanely epic bosses in FF7 in the form of the weapons, who were far, far more difficult than Sephiroth. In particular, I'm talking about the Emerald and Ruby weapons. And yes, that's technically two bosses and I'm cheating. But, uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm naming these two in particular because I haven't beaten them. That's just what I get for losing my memory card at my elementary school playground on a snowy day. All of my main characters were level 90. It was devastating. But that also tells you something. My characters were incredibly overpowered, and I still hadn't beaten them. Now, looking back, there are some cool strategies I didn't think of, because I was 10 years old. But that's kind of the point with these guys. Being overpowered didn't do it. You had to use creative strategies to defeat them. 
creative strategies that I was too stupid to think of when I was 10, or before I lost my memory card. I'll never forget it. I also had this amazing Final Fantasy Tactics save going on that I also lost. It was, it was the worst. The NES was known for two things. For one, being full of some amazing games. I could talk about the Blue Bomber all day. And for two, they're hard. I already listed Ninja Gaiden and Punch-Out for being challenging NES games, but there's another series that definitely deserves a shout. Castlevania. Castlevania is absolutely brutal, in part thanks to its fixed jump. You see, in this game, when you choose to jump, just like in real life, you're going that direction. There's no changing it, so you better be damn sure you intend to go where you want when you hit that button. On top of that, the bosses hurt you for a great deal of health, so, you know, there's that too. And, of course, Dracula, the final boss of the game, has two forms. So, right away, ridiculously hard. But you know what's harder than that? Castlevania 3, where Dracula now has three forms. And if you die, you have to start right back at form number one. It is brutal, and I do not know how people accomplish this without save states. But I'm very impressed. That is quite the achievement. Oh look, a game about a cute penguin. What could possibly go wrong? You start with 1,000 lives, and... Oh, right. You start the game with 1,000 lives because the challenge of the game is beating it without losing all 1,000 of those lives. So you can imagine that when I tell you that a game with this premise has some super hard bosses, it probably has some super hard bosses. And the final boss in his second and final form, Sir Sweet, is a calamity. There's only so many times I can say ridiculous, insane, or brutal, I'm running out of synonyms. He's tough to hit, the main mechanic of the game, stunning bosses to hurt them, doesn't work on him, and you'll basically be required to memorize every single aspect of this boss fight without messing up once in the three minute time limit in order to actually beat him. It is stupid, it is ridiculous, and that is why it's on this list. So this one is kind of a bonus entry. Because as much as I enjoy shoot 'em ups bullet hells, and games like Ikaruga, this one is more so just widely notorious and a game that I haven't played. And that is the final boss of Mushihime-sama Futari. I honestly don't think there's too much to say about this one. I'm just gonna show you footage. My list is limited to games I've played or games that are notorious. So I'm asking you, are there any bosses I should have listed? I almost put Sigma from Mega Man X, the final boss of Illusion of Gaia, and Sephiroth of Kingdom Hearts, but they just didn't quite make my cut. Let me know what you think, and if you'd like to see a similar video about difficult levels or unfair bosses. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.